All right, so now we are back, and this time we are looking at part two, glorify the mindful master, okay? And so we're still looking at glorify the sovereign king and focusing on the book of Psalms. So God is our helper and our shield. So let's look at Psalm 115, the ninth through the 11th verse. And it states, O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. O priests, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. All you who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield. So there he stated it at least three times, telling them that he is your helper and your shield, telling them and reminding the people of Israel about this, that he's your helper and he's your shield. So while trusting something other than God is foolish, trusting in God brings help and protection. The psalmist call to trust God goes all goes out to all people. Even today, he call his call reaches to the ends of the earth, and we must respond to that call. All right, to that call. So God is a glor glorified, the mindful master, all right, the mindful master. And so here in the psalm, when the psalmist wrote it too, he is once again reminding the people that it says, oh, Israel, trust the Lord. He is your helper and your shield, your helper and your shield. So he's telling them that over and over again, hoping that it would eventually sink in and to remind them and to push them forward with trusting and believing in God. Not so much a worrying about those idol gods or worshiping those idol gods that God just previously got on them about, but instead trusting in him. And he's telling them that the whole nation was to trust in God. And all you who fear the Lord, those outside of the covenant of Israel were to trust in God. So he is talking to all individuals, not to a particular group. He is saying to all. And so whenever you look at this passage here, he says, oh, Israel, trusting the Lord, oh, priests, trusting the Lord, and all who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. So he is addressing three groups of people here and telling them that each of them should trust in the Lord. All right. And so here it's saying too that the idols mentioned in Psalms 115, the fourth through the seventh verses could not help anyone. Okay, they were lifeless, but the living God would help all who put their trust in him. And that's what God was reminding them that you want to worship a lifeless God, a God that cannot see, a God that cannot hear, a God that cannot smell, cannot touch, cannot walk, can't do anything. And he's like, I can do all that, all that and more. I got all power. Remember, I am the sovereign king, but you want to worship some little idol God because you fail to trust and believe in me. Okay, trust and believe in me. And he's telling the people that God will be their shield to protect them from their enemies. Okay, the people of Israel had faced the Red Sea when Pharaoh and his army were advancing, but God did not forsake them. This was a constant reminder to God's people of his faithfulness. They could trust in him. Okay, God's promise of help and protection is coupled with the command to trust him. As believers, we need to trust God when the way seems uncertain. We cannot trust in uncertain riches. We cannot trust in our government, and we can only trust in God who dwells in heaven, because everything else is wishy-washy, okay? You can't trust in things like that, but God is sovereign. He is real. He is solid, okay? He's not going to be changing and flip-flopping and doing this and that and doing that. No, he's not like that, okay? And so that's why he is telling the people that put your trust in him, because right now the economy is going up and down, up and down. You can't put your trust and in, in heart and soul into the economy because one day it could be up, the next day it could be down. It's very unpredictable, but with God, he is not unpredictable. He is predictable. You already know what he is going to do, and he does as he wishes, remember? 
And sometimes it may seem unfair to us on our end in our eyes, but to him, it is fair. It is what is best for us, okay? Because remember, he sees the beginning and the end, okay? And so now I want you to think about a situation from your life where you can say that God has been your helper and your shield, okay? So think of a time when he's helped you out before. Think of a time when he's been your shield before, okay? And so you can think of all kinds of situations that people probably have been in. You might've been in a, a health scare. You may have been dealing with cancer or some type of disease or uncurable disease. And God was your helper along the way. And he was your shield along the way, okay? Somebody might have been in a domestic violence situation and God was your helper along the way to get you out of that situation. And he was your shield to protect you during those bad times, those harsh times that you were dealing with. And so here the psalmist said again that we need to trust in God because he is our helper and our shield. And when we read a little bit further on looking at um, Psalm 115 again, let's look at verses 12 through 18. And looking at 12 through 18, he states that the Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests and the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. So here, God didn't have a particular group, not like how humans do. You know, he wasn't going out looking for the popular group. No, it didn't say that. It said that he was going to help everybody, everybody. So God blesses those who fear him, which would include everybody. So God is a fearful God. Even when we do not see him at work, God will pour out his blessings on those who love him. Our responsibility is to remain steadfast in our love for him and praise him, even in the difficult seasons of life, even during the difficult season. So you worship him through the good and worship him through the bad times, okay? So God blesses those who fear him, who believes in him. And looking at this passage here again, he wasn't talking about a specific group. He was talking about the people of Israel, including the priests, and in those who fear the Lord. All who place trust in him are his people and receive his blessings. So he does not forget anybody. All right. Even though at times it may seem like he has forgotten about you, that you're going unnoticed. Nobody is paying you any attention, but God is paying attention. All right. And he says it right there. I will not forget about you. You are my child. You are my son. You are my daughter. And I will never, ever forget you. OK, I will never forget you. All right. Even though down here on Earth, it does get kind of hard. It does get kind of tough. And we see life going on and we see all kind of bad things going on. And it seems like God has abandoned you. But he's telling us right here that he has not abandoned us and he has not forgotten us. And all he wants us to do is to continue on trusting in him. He's like, I got it. I got it. I know what I'm doing. I got it. But I just need you to trust in him. Okay. All right. So this is now concluding part two. Glorify the mindful master. Okay. God is our helper and he is our shield. And God blesses those who fear him. All right. Getting on the people of Israel, reminding him, reminding them all of all the goodness that he has done and where he has brought them from. Okay. Because some of them were falling by the wayside. They were giving up. They were throwing in the towel, worshiping idols and doing all kinds of sinful things. And God is like, no, 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 no. I need you to repent. I need you to come back to me. Okay. I need you to come back to me. So it's just like those runners sometimes when they're running out on that track field and they're getting closer and closer to the finish line. And sometimes they just want to just give up. Sometimes they just want to just fall down. And some of them do fall down, but guess what? They fall down after they done cross the line. <laughs> they don't fall down before. They fall down afterwards because they done put all their might into it. 
And that's what God is saying. Trust in him, believe in him, put all your heart and soul and mind on him. And he got you. You're going to have a blessing, a tremendous and extraordinary blessing if you just trust and believe in him. And part of that believing in him is having eternal life. Because that's what he wants you to have. He loves you so much that that's what he wants you to have. That's why he sacrificed. He died for your sins. Okay? He died for your sins. Blood was shed for you to have an abundant life. Okay? All right. Now, stay tuned for part three. <laughs>